Mark Medina with the Los Angeles Times, and I'm presenting another edition of Lakers Roundtable. And joining me again is the Oklahomans, Darnell Bayberry, who covers uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder. And Darnell, we're, we're approaching uh, almost the halfway point. Oklahoma City and the Lakers are tied 2-2. What, what do you make of this series so far? Uh, you know, I think it's been the best series in the playoffs thus far. I mean, who would have thought that this 1-8 matchup uh, out west here is going to give us the most entertaining game, uh, the most entertaining games, uh, so far in the first week of the playoffs. But that's exactly what it's been. I think, you know, what we're seeing is a, is a young, hungry, uh, Oklahoma City team that's, that's ready to show the world, you know, everything that they've, uh, put in, all the hard work that they've put in and, you know, the development that they've made since last year's 3 and 29 start that everyone I uh, wanted to write about in terms of them being possibly the worst team in NBA history. And, uh, you know, they've got a lot of young talent, and you know, I think they're using this series and, uh, you know, the glamorous Lakers to really show, uh, you know, just how good they are. You uh, wrote in, in today's newspaper a very interesting story, and you laid it out pretty well, ten reasons why uh, – you, know, you would argue that the Thunder is in charge of this series. And for re- people who didn't read the article yet, you can go to the Oklahomans' website. But I'll just tick off the reasons that you listed real quick. You mentioned youth and athleticism, defense, rebounding, Russell Westbrook, Kobe Bryant's assorted injuries, the disparity in bench production, the Thunder supporting cast, the free throw disparity, Sergei Ibaka, and – the Thunder's confidence. Can you talk about those factors and how you think Oklahoma City is uh, you know, kind of taking control of all those facets of the game? Yeah, I mean, you look at all those things, and, you know, that's just, I would say, a short list. I mean, there's there's some other things uh, in there that the Thunder has control of that, that the Lakers have yet to figure out with this team. But uh, really, the only thing that I see is that the, Thund- that the Lakers, uh, the only advantage is I see that the Lakers have over the Thunder is home court at this point. And and you look at the way that the Thunder played out here in L.A. the first two games, this is a confident team that's, that's come back to L.A. I mean, they're they're looking at, uh, okay, we got down by 17 in the first game. We came back and we only lost by eight. And we had it within six with two minutes to go. Uh, you know, we, we got down by 11 in the second game uh, and came back and had a chance to win it uh, in the final 10 seconds of Kevin Durant's three-pointer was just a little bit more to the left. So they lost those first two games by a combined 11 points, uh, and, you know, they're feel, they feel good that they can come in here and get a win. I think it's going to be tough. Uh, I think we're going to see a different Lakers team uh, than we saw in games one and two. I think they were trying to figure some things out, especially with Bynum uh, playing his first game in basically a month, uh, you know, coming off that injury. So, uh, there's a lot of things uh, that the Thunder can be confident about, uh, but but that list that you rattled off, I mean, I mean, there, there's so many different things that the Lakers are just seeing. They just seem baffled by uh, and really stumped. I mean, uh, Russell Westbrook. I think you have to start with him. He's running circles around this team right now, uh, particularly Derek Fisher and and uh, even the bigs. When he gets in the in, inside uh, and attacks the rim. You know, those guys don't seem to know what to do with him. I mean, Derek Fisher was candid in his post-game press conference after game four Saturday night in Oklahoma City that you know, he's not used to having the box-out guards like that that attack the, that attack the glass like R- Russell Westbrook does. So uh, he's given Derek Fisher fits, even uh, the backups, Jordan Farmer and Shannon Brown, when they come in, uh, they haven't been able to slow down Russell Westbrook. So uh, I think he's put his staff on this, this series and, uh, it all starts from there. Kevin Durant has really only had one solid game, and in that game where he had 32 points, uh, I believe it was game two or maybe game three. Uh, no, the game three when he came out uh, and basically uh, played defense on Kobe Bryant late, that was his one shining moment in this in this series. For the rest of the series, we haven't really seen Kevin Durant uh, join the party. So there are so many things that the Thunder hasn't done yet that I think uh, makes them confident that, that they're in control of this thing. 
Well, Darnell, what was interesting, Monday's practice with the Lakers, the uh, main thing that came out of that practice is obviously some of the things that we talked about, the transition defense, Russell Westbrook, the assorted injuries. But the main thing that stood out was the rebounding. And, and you've noted it in your story that Thunder has out-rebound the Lakers 103-82 and in the last two games. What are they doing specifically, especially in the way they're able to counter the Lakers' size? You know, uh, I talked a little bit about it in that article on newsok.com. You have to look at Russell Westbrook uh, to start. Uh, he's he's second on the team right now in rebounding, I think, right at uh, 5.5 or 6.5 uh, a game in these four games. Uh, and he's, you know, he's basically crashing the glass at every, at every opportunity. Uh, and he doesn't have to worry about Derek Fisher and those guys leaking out uh, and, and trying to score in transition at the other end. Uh, he's been doing that all series. He's, he has a knack for rebounding, and, and and that's sort of one of his uh, one of his his uh, hallmarks. I mean, he can really get in there and, and battle down low with those big trees and, and Gasol and Bynum. Uh, he had two occasions in Game Four where he missed his own shot and got his own rebound, and it led to another uh, Thunder bucket. So they've got to be able to uh, limit Russell Westbrook first of all, uh, and then the, the other guards. I mean, you have weak side help. Uh, squeezing from the weak side. Scott Brooks talked about it today uh, in Oklahoma City before they flew to L.A. Uh, you know, he, he talked about the weak side help uh, pinching, and, and, and basically instead of smaller guys out there, you got a six foot nine, six foot ten Kevin Durant who's able to get a nineteen, you know, seventeen defensive rebounds, nineteen for the game. Uh, when you have that, that's an incredible asset, uh, and the Thunder has really used it to their advantage. We're speaking with the Oklahomans, Darnell Mayberry, which you can also follow him on Twitter at twitter.com backslash Darnell Mayberry. And you tweeted from today's practice a lighthearted atmosphere. Scott Brooks challenged the entire team to, ha- to hit a half-court shot. Did anyone hit it? Yeah, a Tom Thomas, of all people, finally hit it. Uh, you know, <laughs> a couple people came close, but the one guy who, you know, isn't really even panic because he steps up and hits it. All right. So there was there was, uh, there was any friendly wagers, or was all in just good fun? Uh, I think Brooks put up twenty bucks to whoever hits it. Either twenty bucks to whoever okay. hits it, or twenty bucks to the whole team. But it was a it was a little nominal fee. But uh, you know they enjoyed it, and I think it's it's keeping them uh, you know sort of at ease and not really thinking about this pivotal game five they got uh, tomorrow night. With that lighthearted atmosphere that you noticed, along with other things, what what is Oklahoma City's approach heading into Game Five? You know, this is a, a team that's you know to be to be blunt. I mean, this this team is going to give you cliche after cliche. Uh, they want to take it one game at a time. They're not going to get too high or too low. They're going to come out and control what they can control. Uh, but you know, in, in this series, it's actually you know it actually rings true. You know, they have to continue to play defense the way they've been playing defense. Uh, they've held the Lakers to, to right at, what, 91, 92 points per game, uh, mm-hmm. 41% shooting. Uh, you know, the three point, the three point marksman for the, for the Lakers, I mean, Fisher has gotten off a little bit, but, uh, you know, for the most part, they've held the three point shooters in, to, in check, and I think that has a lot to do with, uh, Kobe Bryant's busted finger and, and Ron Artest just not been able to find his stroke right now. Uh, but, you know, they, they played really solid defense. Uh, and when you look at the way they ended the season, I mean, it comes as a shock, uh, because they were, they were real bad defensively, uh, over the last month, month and a half in the season. But they've gotten their defensive, uh, intensity back, and I think that's where it starts. If they can close out possessions with rebounds like they've done the last two games, uh, and not allow the Lakers so many second chance points, uh, and even opportunities, uh, like they did in the first two games, but I think they're off to a good start. And then you, you also like to see some of your role players travel. Um, James Harden has got to step up, uh, in game five like he did in three and four. He can't come out here and, and, and be scoreless again like he was in games one and two. Uh, if he does that, I mean, it, it, I talked about bench play. Uh, he gives the, this team a different dynamic when he comes off the bench and he can facilitate, be a playmaker, and knock down open shots. Uh, and Jeff Green has, has to get it going. He showed some signs in uh, game four uh, with, I think, 15 points, but he's got to be consistent and, and be able to knock down the ball, the shot when the ball swung to him. And lastly, 
we've seen four games so far. Uh, Lakers take the first two games. Oklahoma City take, you know, the latter two games at their home court. How would you assess the possibility that Oklahoma City could take the series? You know, that's a tough one. Uh, I think I think they've got a chance. I think they, you know, as I'm writing for tomorrow, I think they better win game five. Uh, if they don't win game five, uh, it's going to be tough sledding because then you got to look at winning game six and game seven. Uh, and, you know, I just don't see that happening. Uh, since the Lakers moved to L.A., uh, they're 18-0 in game five um, when the series tie, is tied 2-2. So that seems to basically put the writing on the wall that the Lakers are going to win this game Tuesday night. Um <laughs> You know, uh, I got a stat in in uh, Tuesday's story that road teams are 21 and 83 all time in NBA history in Game Sevens. Uh, so you know that's a 28.3 percent winning percentage, and it just you know if you don't get Game Five and Game Six, I don't see how the Thunder can reasonably expect to uh, go in there and win Game Six and Game Seven, and Seven being on the road inside Staples Center. I, I just don't see that happening. So if they have any chance, any chance at all of winning this series, I think they need to make sure they win Tuesday night and then come back to Oklahoma City and ride that, that, that wave of momentum that they've built in, the, in that crowd down there and try to get game game uh, six on Saturday or on Friday night. Well, I'm sure, Darnell, those statistics you read off are very telling and I guess to some degree will provide some comfort for Lakers fans, but we'll have to find out on Tuesday once Game 5 tips off. Thanks a lot for all your time and, and all your insight. No problem, Mark. Thank you.